All right, folks, hello again, and welcome back to my channel. Now, in this video, I'd just like to share some information with you in regards to me and my workshop that may be relevant to you in your workshop. Now, as you'll know, if you've seen the series of videos on my YouTube channel, I'm immensely proud of this workshop and my workshop build. I've been in here for two or three years now. It's really well insulated, the floors insulated, the walls, and obviously the insulated roof panels. So when it gets to the winter months and with my little oil fired radiator, it doesn't take a lot to heat it up in here and the insulation retains the heat really well. Now, in order to keep that heat retention, I probably like yourself have gone looking to make sure there's no gaps within the insulation where the heat can escape. What I was also mindful of in the workshop construction was ventilation and I have a gap between the top of the drawbridge going out to allow air to come in and there's also the trickle vents on the UPVC windows that I installed along with the UPVC door. And I'm starting to question whether or not that ventilation is enough. Why am I questioning it? Well, during the winter months, when the windows are closed, obviously, and I'm spending maybe up to several hours at any one time in here, I was starting to develop, develop a bit of a dull headache and maybe feeling a little bit drowsy. Now, I have dismissed that on multiple levels, being different medication I've started taking. Um, you know, I do get tired quite quickly sometimes, so I need to go and have a rest or go and have a break. Was I spending too long in here? Was it, you know, I don't know. But then I watched Gosforth Handyman, I watched Andy McClellan's video about his studio build in the garden. And he talked about CO2 levels in the. Now, I never thought to question the quality of the air inside the workshop. I have my air quality monitor like one of these, and I know a lot of you have got them, which me measures the dust particles in the air so you don't get those nasties going into your lungs. I've also got um, a carbon monoxide monitor in here, but I never actually thought of the quality of the air I was breathing in and whether that would be an issue. So a quick Google, and I was looking at CO2 levels in rooms and what can be uh, okay, manageable, but you shouldn't, and then dangerous, and I decided to purchase myself one of these, which is a CO2 monitor. Now, I'm not suggesting you go out and buy one of these because it was 50 quid, so it's a lot of money. There are cheaper ones on the likes of Amazon. Uh, I got this on Amazon. There's ones you can get for about 20 pounds, but read the reviews on them. Apparently they're shocking. And I put this in here, started out on a day making some candle holders and I was shocked. Uh, within a short period of time, it rose from 550 on the monitor to just over 3000 whatever it is all right and then i looked at this online for uk safe co2 levels in rooms and 250 to 400 i'll put this up fine 400 to a thousand uh okay 1000 to 2000 complaints of drowsiness and poor air 2,000 to 5,000, headaches, sleepiness, stagnant, stagnant, stale, stuffy air. Uh, and it shocked me, to be honest. It, it really did. So in Andy's video, he installed what was called something like a heat vent. Now, I can't afford to buy one of those at the moment. So what I'm currently having to do is open the window up to make sure I've got ventilated, good ventilation coming through. Not ideal in the winter months, and I'm sure you'll be experienced the same because you uh, spend all that time and energy insulating your workshop so you can work in here in winter, but you're having to open the window because the ventilation's poor. So I am going to be saving up for one of them heat vents, which will be for next winter, but it made me think of, you know, yourselves. I know there's lots of people out there who've built their own workshops. They're fastidious about having really well insulated. There's no uh, draft coming in. So are you in that environment and you are not doing yourselves any favors with the quality of the air that you're breathing in? It's something that you might want to consider. And if you've got this really well ventilated space, but poor vent uh, really well insulated space, but poor ventilation, you might want to have to open up the door or open the window for a period of time. Or maybe check it out with a CO2 monitor yourself. Now, it's not like it's going to be poisonous in the terms of brain damage, 
and death because for that that would have to exceed it's according to this 40,000 and it was getting up to like 3,000 however in that 1,000 to 5,000 range there's drowsiness headaches and sleepiness are the reported symptoms you can experience and that's what I was experiencing in here so drowsiness sleepiness and headaches whilst you're working on a bandsaw or you're working on a, a mitre saw or a jigsaw or you're using any kind of machinery isn't really a good mix is it so i just wanted to share my experiences folks with you in this video to make you reflect on your own workspace and make sure you have got a nice comfortable environment but more importantly you've got a safe environment to work in so i just gonna what i will do i'll put this chart up at the end of this video and i'll hold it there for a few seconds so you can check it out for yourselves i'll leave a link in the description to uh, the website that um, i obtained this from so you can maybe check that out you know i'm not saying as i said before i'm not saying go out and spend 50 quid on a co2 monitor what i am saying is reflect on this video look at your own workshop workspace garage and go am i working in a safe environment okay i hope that's of a little bit of help to you and maybe a little bit of food for thought okay folks as ever take good care of yourselves and i'll see you soon thanks for watching